Hello, citizens of the planet. Welcome back to Monday Musings with Larry Lelly. And man, do I have a story for you for this week. This is the scariest thing that I can remember that's ever happened to me on all my years playing Broadway shows. And I've been doing it a long time. Okay. So I'm playing at this particular show. I'm not going to tell you which one it is, because it doesn't really matter. Where the, uh, the drummer... It's a combined drum and percussion book. And the they built a drum booth to completely surround and isolate the drum drummer percussionist. Okay? It's like a recording studio. If any of you know what a recording studio is like, you know, there there are separate rooms for each um kind of family of instruments, and oftentimes they will put the drums and percussion in their own room by themselves. They can completely isolate them, and the, the, the loudness of the drums and the cymbals doesn't bleed into the microphones of the other instruments. So that's how this is set up. So when I'm in this booth, I, there's a window so that I can see the conductor and the rest of the orchestra, and I wear headphones with a monitor mixer so I can get the sound of everybody else playing. Because without the headphones, it's completely, you know, soundproof in there. I can't hear anything else that's going on. So we're getting ready to start the show. I had checked the headphones before the show. They were working fine. I, what is supposed to happen next is what we all hear in our headphones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, blah, blah, blah. There's a little pre-show announcement, and I should have heard that. I didn't hear anything, so I just didn't th think that the announcement happened yet. The next thing I know, I see the conductor stand up and look at me, ready to give me the cue to start the show. And I, it's at this point that I realize that my headphones mix is totally out. It's completely silent. I don't know what's with it, what's going on with it, but it doesn't matter because the conductor is about to point at me to start the show because it's a solo. It's a drum solo at the top of the show. And so he points at me and I play like I'm supposed to. And then we start playing. No sound at all. I All I can hear is the sound that I'm making myself on the drums and percussion. Nothing. No one else. I, so I don't know. It was the most frightening thing ever because I'm completely 100% dependent upon that conductor and every move that they were making. I had to just be exactly right on them in a hope that everyone else was with me and that I was with them. But in that situation, I'm, I, was, I didn't have time to try to figure out what was wrong with my mixer or anything because we were already playing and something had already gone wrong and it was too late. We were off and running. And I couldn't say, wait a minute, stop, everybody, sorry, time out. You know, we've got to fix... It's a Broadway show. You don't stop the show ever unless it's a, an emergency and someone's going to die or something like that. You really don't ever want to stop a show. So I just kept playing, kept playing, and every time I had a couple measures break, I would try to figure out what was going on. And after a while, I figured out that it was the cord had shorted out because when I would, you know, jiggle with it or whatever, I would get a second of a little bitty sound, but not everything, only like a one instrument or something, like the clarinet or something really weird. It was very, very strange. It's never happened before. The other set of, the spare set of headphones were unfortunately across the room, the other side of the room, and with all the instruments between me and those spare headphones, and there was no way that I had a break long enough to get untangled from my current situation. I'm surrounded by drums and percussion at this show. And to get over there, to get the spare headphones, because they were very sadly, someone had put them so far away, and I couldn't get there. I had no choice but to keep playing the show in total silence. I played the entire opening sequence, which is maybe a 12, 12 minute, might be longer. It felt like an hour. It felt so long because... And there are click tracks that happen. I had no idea if I was playing with the click track. Um, and here's the best thing that I will admit to you all is there's one section that is 
just a, um, I don't even want to say what it is that I'm playing, but it's basically a solo for me for an, an infinite, it feels like an infinite amount of measures. And I really never have counted it. I've never actually followed the music on the page because it's, I'm doing the same pattern over and over and over. And I just know where it goes along with the dialogue. And I'm trying my best to like watch the conductor and try to figure out where I am in the music, but I have no clue because I can't hear anything. I don't know where they are. So I'm just playing away. And finally, and you know, the conductor's used to me always just stopping because I know when to stop. He doesn't really have to cue anything because I know what's going on. And <laughs> so I'm playing and playing and playing and he doesn't really cut me off and I keep playing. And he looks at me like, what are you doing? He doesn't know at this point that I don't have any sound in my headphones because I haven't been able to get a message to anyone <laughs> because I haven't had time. And I'm in this booth and I'm trying to mime to them. I can't hear, I've got no, I'm trying to, you know. <laughs> it's too bad I don't, don't know sign language, not like anyone in there would know anyway, but. Probably. Anyway, it was completely terrifying. Completely terrifying. And after that was over, I was able to, you know, after the opening sequence was over, I was able to get the other headphones and make sure everything was working again. Then I was able to text the people in the other room and text the conductor because we can't talk during the show. I sent them a text message in the other room and told them what had happened. And at that point, they were all shocked that it didn't go worse than it did. They were shocked that that I only made that one mistake because I didn't know where I was in the music. <laughs> they said I was with them all the hall all the time. And so, the thing that I learned from all of this is besides having the spare headphones very close to you and making sure that they're always right there, um, is I had to make a decision in the moment, A, whether to continue playing or to stop the show. I decided to continue playing. B, the second decision I had to make was, how am I going to make this happen to the best of my ability so that we don't train wreck? And so what I did was I just stared at that conductor and I, and luckily this person has a very good time, very good tempo and a very clear beat pattern and I stayed right exactly with them and I played so strongly and so confidently. I wasn't being tentative at all so that anybody else who could hear me really had no choice but to play with me. I couldn't hear them at all, but I pretended like I could and like I, and, and just this, do the same thing that I really always do, which is lay it down and dictate, this is where we are people. So that's what I chose to do, and luckily it was the right choice because they all didn't really know what I was dealing with in there. They just thought we were playing the show like always, and Larry's playing, and we're going to play with him, and off we went. So, <laughs> I'm sorry this is a bit of a long musing this week. I should probably put a little warning on this, but it's... It was so insane and crazy and had never happened before like that, you know? So we, and I survived and the show went on and no one really knew, which is always the goal <laughs> to not have it, anything affect the show, you know, in a, in a bad way, in a negative way. Okay. So that's my little Monday musing. I hope you enjoyed the terrifying tale. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next week.